ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ఐ థ్యాంక్ అమృత స్కూల్ ఆఫ్ ఆయుర్వేద అండ్ డాక్టర్ పరమేశ్వర నంబూద్రి ఫర్ ఇన్వైటింగ్ మీ ఆన్ ద టాపిక్ టు స్పీక్ అబౌట్ స్నేహన సో బేసిక్లీ వీ నో అర్హాస్ అండ్ అనర్హాస్ యూనో లైక్ స్వేద్య సంశోధ ఇట్ ఈస్ దేర్ ఇన్ అష్టాంగ హృదయం ఆర్ చరకం బట్ ఇఫ్ యూనో ఐ జస్ట్ ట్రై టు ఫైండ్ అవుట్ లైక్ ఇన్ ద ఇండికేషన్స్ అండర్ ద డిఫరెంట్ సినారియో ఓకే సో ఐ బుట్ దిస్ టేబుల్ కాలమ్ ఇఫ్ యూ సీ సో దిస్ ఇస్ ద ఇండికేషన్స్ యూనో of different scenarios mm-hmm. like as a pura karma before swedana and before uh, uh, like before swedana and before samshodana then different stages of life if you see this snehana is indicated in vridha and bala then different conditions so ruksha then krisha and abala so these are different conditions and different viharas if you see this vyayama nityam madhya nityam so it's just i segregated nothing else it's already in the book just you know just to understand the avastha i made it okay then stri nityam then krisha and abala then in different diseases of course n number of diseases you know has been mentioned under snehapana so mainly vata vikaras we know why it is then kshina shrik kshina retas abhishanda timira in uh, in disorders also so this is you know snehana um, as a i am talking about it can be either internal as well as bahya as well as abhyantara snehapana both so this is the avastha as well as conditions viharas okay next slide so i am straight away going to the acha sneham okay so as i said uh, you know i am uh, uh, i'll just try to highlight certain things uh which is practical i feel okay it can be you may have difference of opinion also so i'm just going about the acha sneham because that's what we practice every day right so when it comes to vicharanam or sadhya sneham of course sadhya sneham practice also there but among all the acha sneham is more you know it is effic- the efficacy is very high because our acharyas are very great always they gave the alternatives you know if something the main thing we are not able to do then they gave the alternatives so this sadhya sneha or this um, you know uh, vicharana sneha they are alternatives but always it is best to go with the best thing okay so that is the reason why acha sneha is always the best when you compare which are not because they are compromise you know if some if nothing is something we have to do then we have to go to that route so that's why i took this topic acha sneham so acha peyastu yah sneho tamahur na vicharanam okay so snehasya విషద్రష్టః కల్పః ప్రథమ కల్పిహ సో దీస్ వర్డ్స్ ఆర్ వెరీ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ప్రథమ కల్పిక సో ఎమాంగ్ ఆల్ ద యునో స్నేహణ ప్రొసీజర్స్ అచ్చ ఈస్ కన్సిడర్ ఎస్ ప్రథమ కల్పిక ఇట్ ఈస్ ది బెస్ట్ ఓకే దట్ ఈస్ ద రీజన్ వై దే యూస్ ఇట్ దిస్ వర్డ్ ప్రథమ కల్పిక యునో బికాస్ ఎమాంగ్ ఆల్ ద స్నేహణ ప్రొసీజర్స్ దిస్ ఈజ్ ది బెస్ట్ బికాస్ దిస్ విల్ ఈల్డ్ ద ఎనార్మస్ రిజల్ట్ ఓకే దెన్ అచ్చ పేయ ఓకే అచ్చ పేయ సో దీన్ చక్రపాణి సేస్ ఓదనాది అసంబంధి ఓకే సతి పేయ చక్రపాణి అని చరక సూత్రం సో ఓదనాది సో వితౌట్ యాడింగ్ ఓదన ఎక్సెట్రా ఓకే ఓదన మాంసరస ఎక్సెట్రా అచ్చ పేయ అచ్చ పేయ దట్ మీన్స్ ప్యూర్ అన్మిక్స్డ్ ఓకే వేర్ యూ విల్ నాట్ బి మిక్సింగ్ ఎనీ సార్ట్ ఆఫ్ థింగ్స్ either prakshepa dravyas or uh, food items okay nothing it should be given as a pure ghee next we will see whether the big topic comes whether medicated or non medicated i try to find answer for that also so that is my own interpretation we will see okay so next so if you see in nutshell where we give this achapana so it is administered internally okay so it is used for either dosha shodhana or dosha shamana definitely patya is there patya must be followed okay then always large dose is given for a stipulated period of time okay this is very important large dose is given for a stipulated uh, in in case of shodhananga snehapana maximum 7 days okay whereas in shamana of course shamana also it was 7 days when you see the original text you know now only we later we practically we say until the remission of disease but if you see you know originally in the text they have not used such words shamana sneha can be continued until until the remission of the disease nothing like that either you give any sneha pana maximum is 7 days 
can be shamana or shodhana. So basically, how you differentiate this shamana, how this sneha pana will act as shamana sneha or shodhana sneha, only two criteria. Depends on the dose, depends on when you are administering. This, these are the two criteria. You know, dose and when you are administering. These two, you know, is mainly, you know, helpful. Or these are the two criteria by which whether dosha shodhana or dosha shamana is going to happen. Okay. So basically, large do dose is given. Okay. So it is given for shodhana or shamana doshas. Okay. Next slide. So this is the different, uh, you know, this tabular column. Different, uh, you know, uh, what is the difference between this shodhana acha and shamana acha? So criteria. So this also I just made this uh, just for the easy understanding. So if you see the matra, so this is also easy. Madhyama charaka and uttama. Really. I tried to find answer. I don't know really. There is no answer for it. Why? In what way? Why they thought? Really, no idea. Okay. Then, if you see shamana acham, it is madhyama. So the dose is madhyama. Whereas in shodhana acham, it is madhyama as well as uttama. So if you see the duration, three to seven days. Here, this is what I said about till vyadi is vyadi shamana. But this is practically actually. But if you see the original text, there is no such word. There is no. Nowhere it is mentioned that you give Samana Sneha until uh, the remission of disease occurs. You know, it is said maximum any Sneha, seven days. That's it. Whereas practical purpose, we give small dose. So, you know, we are, whereas in PG and PhD studies, we must take these kind of studies. It would be uh, helpful to come to conclusion. Okay. Then if you see time of administration so if you see the shodhana cha always fix it time in the early morning okay then if you see shamana cha when there is a good appetite so it can be evening also so that's why you know some uh, when you study snehapana according to the rutu you know some of the uh, places some of the rudus sneha, sneha pana can be given in the evening so that is only for shamana sneha that is nothing to do with the shodhana sneha because shodhana sneha we will see next why it should be given in the morning it should be given only in the morning only whereas shamana can be given in the morning or in the evening okay so once again if you see anupanam here for shodhana cha depends on sneha so you know that for Grita Mushna Jalam, for Thailam, you know, Yusham, and for Maja and Vasa, it is Manda. Okay. Whereas here, Shamana Sneha usually we give depends on the Rogam. Okay. In Malayalam, we call Membudi or something like, you know, Prakshepa Dravya. I said only for Shodhana we will not. But if you see the original text, once again, it is a bit confusing. There should not be any mixture. Okay. So this is also a practical point where depends on the Roga, you can give any kind of, uh, you know, Arishtam also can be given. Okay. Because it is appetizer or, you know, uh, any other uh, Kashayams with this Deepana Pachana, which can be helpful to digestion or maybe like Bhavana Shunti or something like that. Okay. Then if you see Samyak Snitha Lakshanas, mostly in Shodhana Aksha, you see the Samyak Snitha the lakshanas always whereas in uh, you know shamana acha maybe only certain uh, uh, you know this uh, some extent of the lakshanas you may see okay then post therapy definitely when you do the shodhana acha sneha shodhana must be followed whereas for uh, shamana acha sneha shodhana is not necessary okay next slide okay so now this is where the things uh, you know turns differently whether we have to give uh, pure ghee or pure sneha or whether we have to give uh, the processed this is the thing okay so always i used to think i i used to you know when i was studying or when i was writing the book also i was like in dilemma when you see the vasa and majja vasa or majja sneha pana they are very pure we are not processing them with anything, right? Whereas only Thailam and Gritam we process. Whereas Vasa and Majja we give purchase, you know, we get it from the, you know, either uh, pig or uh, in a goat. Then we heat it and we give it directly. We don't do any processing. Whereas for uh, when you see the text after every rogas, the Gritam and Thailams mentioned and so many uh, dravyas been added and processing is been done. So, when you are going to administer Vasa Majja as it is, why not Thailam and Gritam? Okay. So, this question always came and we never tried to process the Vasa. That is the truth. With the dra dravyas. 
or uh, majja we never try to process them maybe in some of the external therapies we do use them like in kolumbus you know you have dhanvantaram kolumbus sahasradi kolumbus kolumbus is nothing but yamaka sneha or you know this uh, uh, mahasneha where you mix uh, thailam gritam or vasandal only for external we are processing whereas internally we just give the pure one we don't process so if you know that study can be also done processed vasa non processed vasa what is the difference like if a person is able to drink because if you give the pure vasa it is very difficult you know the smell and you know not even like that's the reason why it's very small quantity even 15 ml you give it will take like 6 8 hours to digest so in maha vyatha vyadhi is in severe pain condition where i started giving where in severe pain condition either through vasti or through uh, internal sneha pana it is really really you know helping i would not say it is the great but when you compare to other therapies this vasa pana is or uh, you know the majja pana i give it in uh, you know this uh, astigada vyadis whereas in the face it is and other thing i give this vasa pana so you know we have to find out what is the difference or wh- how what happens when we uh, process it and not uh, without processing it what are the differences happens uh, about the palatability or uh, you know how the person is taking internally all those things we can find out so it's once again we can do that research so if we see kevalam paitike sarpir vadike lavanan vidam deyam bahu kafe chapi vyosha kshara tirkadukan vidam okay so tirkaduka is from vagbata here according to sushruta it is kshara samayitam only whereas vagbata adds tirkadu tirkadu also so if you see here so kevalam paitike sarpir so in pure kevala pitta condition sarpi is given whereas if it is a vata condition okay then lavana must be added okay then if you see in bahu kafa it should be kshara or trikatu okay so basically here we must understand so acharyas are very clear that if you are going to give uh, you know sarpi as a sneha pana in vata and kafa condition it should be processed because i said we will see in the later stage also and dalhana is clearly explaining prakshepa rahitam we should never do prakshepa that i will i will show you okay so here some people may take it as a prakshepa no it is not prakshepa it is mixed or processing so in the ne- next slide but whereas when you in kevalam paitika also it comes processing next slide so if you see kevalam means asahayam annadra anyadrave samyuktam ఇత్యర్థ తచ్చ సంస్కృతం అస్ అసంస్కృతం వా సత్యభి అన్యద్రవ్య సంయోగే సంస్కృతం లభ్యతే సంయోగ సంస్కార్యోర్ గుణ గుణర్భి గుణయోర్ భిన్నత్వం ఏతేన సంస్కృతం ఆ సంస్కృతం వా కేవలం క్వాత చూర్ణాది ప్రక్షేపరహితం సర్పి పేతవ్యం ఇది జ్ఞేయం సో ఇఫ్ యు సీ దిస్ లైన్ ఓకే బేసికలీ హీ ట్రై టు ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ డిఫరెన్స్ బిట్వీన్ సంస్కారం స సంస్కార అండ్ సంయోగ సో ద పెర్మిటేషన్ కాంబినేషన్ ఇట్ వేరీస్ సో సంస్కార ఈస్ డిఫరెంట్ సంయోగ ఈస్ డిఫరెంట్ ఓకే వెరస్ దిస్ లైన్ ఈస్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ క్వాత చూర్ణ ప్రక్షేప రహితం సర్పి సో ప్రక్షేపస్ మస్ట్ నాట్ యాడెడ్ వెరస్ సంస్కృతం ఆ సంస్కృతం వా ఇట్ క్యాన్ బి ప్రాసెస్డ్ ఆర్ ఎయిదర్ ప్రాసెస్డ్ ఆర్ not processed whereas if you see gayadasa he clearly states pittahara dravyer sadhitam eva kevalam ityah so he says the ghee if you are trying to give even for pitta though it is said as kevalam but it should be processed with pittahara dravyas then only you give so this gives a one idea whether to give pure ghee or processed ghee so i go with these kind of uh, you know texts i go with the text so according to the text and acharya this is basically you can see pitta haradravya saditam eva kevalam ityartha so even for pitta he says process it with pitta haradravyas so that means processing or samskara must be done to gritam or thailam which is very very important so this gives one idea that whether to give pure ghee or samskarita ghee or samskarita thailam so according to this i think this make a logic this makes a logic right so according to this statement definitely it should be samskarita or processed okay so basically this is what dalhana also said whereas gayadasa clarified okay so 
Hence, it can be understood from the word Kevala is drinking ghee divided of kwata, churna, etc. Prakshep dravyas. Okay. Whereas, it should be processed. Okay. Next slide. So, you know all this. Achapana kala. So, maximum is Snehasya pragrashotu Saptaratharo Triratakao. So, okay. Maximum is 7 days. Minimum is 3 days. Then, how about this is for maximum 7 days for Krurakoshtam and minimal 3 days is for Mrithukoshtam. Then, how about the Madhyama Koshta? It is about 6 days. 5 days or 6 days. So, once again, Arnadatta says it is Madhyama Koshta to Shadaham. Whereas, uh, Sarvang Sundari commentary, uh, what is his name? I forgot. Uh, Arnadatta Ashtanga Hridaya, one more commentary. He says it is 5. Okay? 5 or 6. So, this is Whereas according to another 36, whereas Hemadri says it can be 5 or 6. Okay. Next slide. Sorry, next slide. Okay. So then what do what to do if you don't get some X Nik Dalakshanas? Once again, in Charaka Siddhi first chapters you would you would have studied this. Okay. Uh, even uh, Chakrapani writes in his complete commentary, like some people goes about Yadi tu Sapta. Saptaham Pita Sneha Lakshana Na Utpadyate Tada Dinamekam Vishramya Punaha Sneham Yojeti Iti. Okay. So in this in this context, uh, Chakrapani says some uh, people, some there are some practices where they say Snehapana can be given until nine, nine days also. Okay. But he states that that is Acharya Vriddham. Okay, Sarvada Acharya Vridha Meva because Acharya has clearly stated that maximum seven days must be given. Okay, not beyond that. So he he doesn't he quotes others, but he don't agree with this nine days concept. Okay, so he says if it is clearly given according to the uh, um, person's Agni and Koshta, if it is dose is properly fixed, definitely. It, you will get some Snigdha Lakshanas in 7 days. So, I try to find answer for this 7 days concept. Okay. So, in my book, I wrote about this autophagy and Snehapana. So, autophagy is nothing but, you know, auto means self, phagy means destruction. So, in certain uh, conditions, the cell will destruct itself. Okay. So, the, you know, in certain conditions, like take the example, if any foreign, um, you know, uh, like virus or anything you know uh, so there are certain conditions uh, this uh, infection all those things where the foreign objects and so cell if if the cell find out his friend or the other cell is a rogue cell or this fellow is creating trouble so the liposomal activity starts okay and it engulf that you know uh, rogue cell okay this is called autophagy this is very very important for maintaining the health okay and you can st read about this autophagy in um, uh, you know in uh, internet or in books also so it is found out by it there are lots of research research is been going on so if you study that autophagy mechanism so autophagy is like a double-edged sword okay if it is given maximum you know that is there like maximum seven days or it's it's really fascinating you know i have written in my book because i didn't bring it here so in seven days or nine days is the maximum thing where this you know autophagy is triggered and it is a protective mechanism but if it goes beyond that if the exposure is same the autophagy will start destructing our own cells okay so my conclusion was, my hypothesis was, when you give this Snehapana, because I made lots of uh, research and I made that hypothesis on that. So, when you give this Snehapana, ketosis and this autophagy mechanism is happening. So, the autophagy is always good for our body. You know, it can be done through exercise also or when you take less food. You know, this is, you know, protective autophagy takes place. So, but it should be you know given in our the autophagy must be triggered or it can be uh, you know uh, like it can happen only for seven days or maximum nine days above that if you expose to the same thing if you don't treat that can create trouble to the body so i have concluded that it could be also because see, we need to find out why seven days you know what happens after seven days right like what will happen if we give 10 days or 12 days you know, all those things. 
So Sneha Satmiya occurs within that only we get some mixed the lakshanas. All those according to the text we have, right, sir? So all those things. But how how you know they would have found out this, or what is really happening in the cellular level? So that's what you know I wrote in that. Okay, it was like a new kind of thing. So just you know I. Because that book was I was writing, I was searching always like uh, researching for uh, five years. It's almost like uh, 400 pages only about Bahi and Abed and Snehana. Okay, so in that I wrote this new concept, and many people wrote back to me also. So you know this is fascinating when you read about it. Okay, so this if you see the dose, okay, depends on the digestion and matra as well as the agni and the kosta this is very very important that is the reason why if you see the brahatra is they never told about fixed dose okay like 30 ml 50 ml nothing like that they always said see the kosta and agni fix the dose that's it okay and according to Vagbata and charaka only three dose mridu madhya and uttama matra whereas sushruta gave about five okay depends on the digestion okay next slide okay so this is if you see the you know this is dwabhyam okay chadurbir ashtabir yamer jiriyanti yakramat riswa madhya uttama matras tabhyascha viksha hrisiyasim okay these are the three matras okay so two yamas four yamas and eight yamas so for mridu in a mild dose it is two yama it will take two yama to digest so this is the parameter they gave they never gave the metric okay they gave only the parameter about the time for digestion and agni and costa maximum they have not given the metric at all okay so basically kalpet viksha doshadin prageva so before starting any matra give the rcsi dose or the test dose okay test dose is one which digest in one yama according to arnadatta okay which digest in one yama okay so basically around you can say like 30 to 50 ml that is also mentioned okay so first you have to do hrisiyasi then hriswa madhyama and uttama okay so these are the three doses of achasneha next slide okay then if you see this is during the breath three times this is the beauty of snehapana as i always said as i said there is no pra, you know exact quantity is mentioned you know this is ayurveda science is very flexible always you will find answer if you don't know answer you can say it's prabhav okay so nobody can question us always you can say apta upadesha finished okay no no you are not supposed to question apta right so ayurveda is a very flexible science so we can find answer for anything okay so basically if you see in terms of quantity of the individuals they have never mentioned okay so as i said the standardization of doses in metric system is not at all possible as it has been told in the classics to fix the dose as per the individual needs okay fixation of dosage of snehapana and numerical value is not possible because the dose will vary from person to person based on dosha koshta agni bala okay so if you give the fixed dose or if you don't uh, understand the agni and koshta of the person and without rcs if you are going to give the snehana definitely you know this is what I have seen in my practice. You don't get this, this proper samyaks the lakshanas within that stipulated time. Whereas when you follow this, uh, easily you get the samyaks the lakshanas in the stipulated time for sure. Okay. Next slide. Okay. So if you see Anupana. So Jalam Ushnam Grite Payam Yushas Tailesu Anushasete Cha Vasa Majastu Mandaha Syat Sarvesham Ushnam Atambua. So you know this Ushnam is a universal uh, you know Anupana. So for Grita it is Ushnajala, okay? Then Yusham is Tailam and for Vasa Maja it is Mandam. So if you see uh, why we give uh, Ushnajalam in for the Gritam? Because it helps for the digestion and metabolism of the ghee, okay? Because it's a fat and always when you give Ushna Jala, uh, of course not in too much quantity whenever it is necessary it helps for the digestion of the fat so if you see yusham so it is very good anfana parvata because yusham contains more protein and alkaline in nature okay and it counteracts the vidahi nature of the 
Tailam. Okay? So that could be the reason why they said Yusham. Then if you see Masa Majja or Gurutama in nature, so Lagu and Pana must be given. Hence, Mandam is a simple starch and digest, get digest easily. Hence, they gave this Anupana for this Vasand Majja. Next slide. Okay? So, now we will see about Shamana Sneha. Okay? So, basically, Shamana Sneha is Rogasya Shamanartham Ubiyanjamana Sneha. Okay? Then, Dosha, what it does? Dosha Anukarshani Matra, Sarva Marga Anusarini. So, it subsides the doshas, Sarva Marga Anusarini. So, it, it enters into all the Roga Margas, three Roga Margas. That's what is Sarva Marga Anusarini. So, Shaka, okay, Abhyantara, Bahya Roga Marga. So, it pervades all the three Roga Margas. Balya Punarnavakari. So, here Punarnavakari means Nishesha Dosharatam. So, it will pacify the vitiated doshas completely that's what is punar navakari okay according to chakrapani so balya punar navakari sharira indriya chetasam okay so it is very good for sharira indriya and chetas also okay then as i said if dosha samana or dosha shodhana has to happen the time Okay, and matra is very very important. So if you see when to give shamana sneham, pibet sam shamanam sneham anna kale prakankshita ha, shamana ha kshudvato ananno madhya matra shashashate. Okay, so basically it should be given either in uttama or madhya matra. Okay, then anna kale prakankshita ha when the person is having good digestive power. Next slide. Why it should? Why the person should have a, a good digestive power? Because in Abu Abu Bukti the person, the kapha aurta srotas will be there. Okay, the kapha will be, you know, uh, everywhere. It will be uh, the aurna of kapha will be there in the GI and other places. But the main aim of shamana sneha is to pacification of dosha, and it has to go. Uh, it has to get digested, and it has to pervade all the body. Whereas in the Kapha or the Srotas, when Abu Abu is the person, because of this Kapha or the Srotas, that time if you give Snehana, then it will not get digest, then it will not be able to travel all over the body, then it will not do Dosha Shamana. So our purpose is dissolved there, okay, diluted there. That is the reason why, okay, Shamana Sneha must be given when the person is having, you know, having good appetite and it should be in a form of Acha Sneham, okay. Next slide. So, once again, basically nowadays we give very little quantity and we don't, you know, say patient to do follow Pathya and all. You see, this, these are the areas why I say for Shamana or Shodhana also it is maximum 7 days. You can see, Atracha Uttamaya Matraya Snehapananantram Pathyam Karyam. If the dose is less, if we give like 15 ml or 30 ml and all, we don't need to, you know, Acharyas would not have told these words. So if he is saying, Atra Uttamaya Matraya Snehapanantram Pathyam Karyam. So definitely the dose should be high. And when the dose is high, because we know the Uttama Matra digest in 24 hours. So if you want to give Shamana Sneha, basically it should be like this. The Uttama Matra should be given after CAC once proper Pachana, Snehana, sorry, Pachana and Deepana is done. Then definitely Uttama Matra should be given every day. Okay? Until, you know, you get some mixed Nigdalakshanas. Once the digestion, once the ghee is digested or once the Snehana is digested, then this Patya must be followed. You know, this is how the practically. This is how according to the text. Whereas in practically, we don't do that. But when you see, look at the text, this is what they have mentioned. So, Atracha Uttamiya Matra Snehapana Anantram Patyam Karyam. Okay? So, basically, Upacharastu Shamane Karya Sneha Viriktavat. You can see. So, how importance they gave for the diet here. Whereas nowadays when we give the gritam just one spoon, 15 ml, we don't you know, ask the patient to follow all these things. So according to this explanation, if you see, it should be the best dose and definitely we must wait until it gets digested, then patya must be followed. Okay? So, do's and do's of Shamana Sneha, similar to Virechana, that is very light food must be given and he must be advised fasting until he get the full digestion uh, of the ghee. Then, once again, if you see Sushruta, Deya Yusho, yusho Rasova, Syat Akrita Krutova, Alpa Alpa Sarpishkova, Vilepiva Vidiyate. So, this should be the diet for Shamana Sneha. So, 
very simple and sattvic diet should be given and in case in practical also if you are giving ask the patient whenever you are giving sneha pana internally at least those days ask the patient to not to take you know vidahi aharas you know because our aim is to basically bring down the dosha so this patya is very very important during sneha pana so ask the person to take very simple aharas without vidahi or without mixture of so many things or you know this all those fast food and all those things so he must be advised to follow very simple diet which is very very important it can be either shamana or shodhana because it is acha sneha so definitely it should be kept in our mind okay next slide okay so next you know we'll see about brahmana sneha so brahmana is given with food so brahmano rasa madhya dehi so brahmana is always given with food so it is also we can say it is a vicharana sneha also okay vicharana means thinking you think a lot and give that's why it is called as vicharana okay so brahmana sneha is nothing but vicharana okay because vicharana also we mix so many you know food items so that is the reason why this vicharana sneham you cannot give before shodhana because you may not uh, definitely because it is been tried it will not give some mix with the lakshanas because you are giving with the food the quantity will be less that's the reason why for shamana and shodhana they gave go for acha okay so which are now second indications if you see for children old age all this because it's a compromised one okay because which are now that's the thing you have to think twice before giving anything and you have to put so many ideas before giving vicharana that's why it is said vicharana sneha okay so brahmana is given rasa madhya dehi okay so if you see it is indicated only in durbala manda agni bala vridda sukatmahi apatya rikta koshta jwara ati sara kasi bihi where you know the vata is more high already you know the convalescent period you can see you see this when you read this durbala you know after the disease or emaciation you know the convalescent period of course bala vridda there will be emaciation pure vata conditions where you need a kind of brahmana therapy so here this is you know nothing but a brahmana therapy you give after the convalescent period or after you know this uh, uh, you know he has been recovering or he is already very old where his digestion is very poor where you need to give more brahmana so that's where this concept comes okay then once again if you see this is beautifully said only in ashtanga hridayam and ashtanga sangram you don't see this shloka in uh, charakam or sushrutam okay prak madhya uttra bhakto asa ado madhya urdva dehajan so if it is given before food it cures the disease of uh, you know the diseases which happens below ado degam below nabi if it is given during you know the food or madhyam during the food then it cures the you know middle part of the disease which occurs in the middle part of the body and if it is given after food and it takes care of the diseases which occurs upper part of the body okay next slide ఓకే సి రిక్త కో కోష్ట ఇన్ సర్టన్ కండిషన్స్ లైక్ యునో ఇఫ్ యు సీ దిస్ ఆనాహం రైట్ ఆర్ ఇన్ గుల్మం వేర్ దిస్ జిఐ యునో రిక్త కోష్ట మీన్స్ లైక్ ఎంటి కోష్ట బేసిక్లీ ఇఫ్ యూ literal translation if you see it's empty kosta but it is not like that you know there are certain diseases where udavartam or anaham or gulma you see this rikta koshtam where the person feel you know as if nothing is there or nothing is digesting uh, in his uh, intestines okay but whereas you don't see any kind of explanation uh, in the you know uh, our uh, you know this uh, chakrapani are in this so my understanding of rikta kosta is in these kind of these are the special diseases if you see anaham udavartam especially in sushruta it's been mentioned okay and in gulma gulma also okay so basically where the person feels despite of eating despite of having agni he will not have that nourishment or brahmana effect or will feel that emptiness you know maybe like you can say this uh, this hypo tension or you know in this it happens no so that's what my understanding of rikta kostam if you have any other thing i am happy to accept that also but this is my understanding okay then uh, apatya rikta kosta so okay once again patyam 
you know it is good for srotas right so the person here once again if you see apatya means the person who always had uh, you know this food and other items like who follows the apatyas not following the patya and once again are the person who has uh, you know uh, some kind of sroto dushti also because in sroto dushti sometimes you may not go for complete shodhana okay so where you need to give some brahmana in, in some some of the uh, avarna cases where you can give this brahmana because if you see the avarna of vata in uh, some of the cases you see this brahmana sneha is indicated in vata vyadi okay this is what my understanding is i try to find out this is a very good question but you don't see much answer in uh, you know in the commentary whether by arnadatta or uh, this one okay ma hmm? so can we correlate it uh, kaisaiya according to the malaxation syndrome yes as i said in gulma that's what i said gulma is a large spectrum it can be malabsorption syndrome okay where the person despite of eating food he feels nothing is happening he is feel he feels that emptiness so in udavartam or anaham these things happen so that can be taken no problem okay yeah so next slide okay then this is about uttra bhakti ka sneham okay so basically this uttra bhakti ka sneham is mentioned in bahu shirshagate nasyam పానం చత ఉత్తర భక్తికం చరక చికిత్స ఓకే దెన్ హితం వాదగ్నం ఆద్యం చ ఘృతం చ ఉత్తర భక్తికం ఓకే దెన్ వన్స్ అగైన్ వన్ మోర్ ఇండికేషన్ ఇస్ మూత్రజేషు విశేషాన్ మూత్రజేషు వికారేషు బికాస్ యూ సీ దిస్ అష్టాంగ సంగ్రహ మార్గం ఫస్ట్ ఇండికేషన్ కమ్స్ ఇన్ దిస్ మూత్ర రోగ దిస్ రోగనుత్పాదనీయం వేర్ యూ నో వెన్ యూ కంట్రోల్ ద అర్జస్ వేగధారణ ఆఫ్ మూత్ర యూ సీ దిస్ సో దట్స్ రీజన్ వైట్ సెట్ మూత్రజేషు వికారేషు ఓకే విశేషాన్ దిస్ ఉత్తర భక్తికం then vadagnam okay then uh, hitam vadagnam then bahu shirshagate nasyam then uttara bhaktikam is indicated in rakta arshas also and according to kashyapa okay it is indicated in vajigarna places also these are the indications is scattered in the text but these are the indications mootra javikaras and bahu shirshagatam okay and even in vata vyadis okay so basically it is very good for vyana and udana vada imbalance okay and here if you see the snehana which is given before and after food okay before and after food okay it is called uttara bhaktika okay whereas when you see the literal uh, because later we, next slide we will see if you see the literal meaning uttara means next after food after eating uttara bhaktika okay so you take the gritam then you eat the food okay whereas in the next slide we will see it comes yojana dvayam next slide okay nasecha panecha uttara bhaktikam masha saindava saditam eva tailam nyayam okay so according to chakrapani tatra mashasya kwatah this is a special preparation he to tell us to use for uttara bhaktika sneha pana as well as nasya in bahu shirsha gada rogas so you can see thailam should be prepared with saindavam and masha kalkam okay masha se sari kwatam and saindava se kalkam okay so this should be used in bahu shirsha gada rogas and even in apabhaka okay so how to give this is yojana dvayam so this is how you know explanation goes so yojana dvayam means there are two interpretation okay so initially first you give uttama matra of gritam okay only chakrapani says about thailam whereas all other acharyas okay thailam is baddha vitkam okay thailam is baddha vitkam hence gritam is preferred in uttara bhaktikam because we are working on mootra javikaras so acharyas clearly told gritam must be a medium for uttara bhaktika sneha because thailam is baddha vitkam so already uh, you know apana vata vaigunya is there you cannot have a thailam because once again it can cause this baddha vitkam that's why it is said to use gritam okay so here the yojana dvayam means you know first you have to use the uttama matra of sneha pana uh, that is gritam so once it is digested okay you must ask the person to eat food okay then once that food is digested then once again you must ask the person to drink gritam in avara matra that is one method the other one is ulta first you give the alpa matra 
once it is digested give the simple patya food to him okay then when that food is digested give uttama matra okay this is the interpretation of yojana dvayam okay it is there in dalhana and even chakrapani i have written in book because in the i didn't want to go too much i didn't write about it but this is what about yojana dvayam next slide you can say this opid is name opida yes 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 avpedakam also because they both are like you know similar avpedak uttara bhaktikam once again you know you eat after food whereas avpedakam once again this is both are similar okay uh, ah uh, sorry 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 in uttara bhaktikam you eat after food this is actually avpedakam you know that was wrong slide yes 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 sorry you go back to ma yeah so this is about uttar go back yeah so this is about uttara bhakti ka sneha so where in bahu sirsha gata so i was i got confused so this uttara bhakti ka sneha only used in bahu sirsha gata uh, you know diseases where you give this uh, snehana then followed by food okay whereas next slide where what i uh, explained is avapedakam okay whereas i forgot to put the this one next slide ma okay so this is about uttara bhaktikam okay this is sorry this is your, how to give this is also wrong this yojana dvayam comes under avapedakam so mootra jeshu vikareshu avapedakam okay so it can be given in uh, practically uh, you know i give it for uh, bph cases okay and B, nowadays i give it in bph cases of course and some of the you know infertility cases also in female i practice this so there only this avapedakam this yojana dvayam comes okay it can be uh, you know used in two ways so usually i prefer that second one where mild dose i'll be giving because all of a sudden if you give too much dose the person vomits you know the stomach irritation headache all those things comes so i start with very simple dose then once it is digested i give usham or simple kanji okay once that is digested then little bit higher dose will be given so the whole day will be only that okay no other treatment will be given okay no it can be for 7 days the process is one day it can be repeated like 3 days 5 days same like snehapana okay these things are not written in any book okay so only little bit uh, literature is available pralbhaktam sasyade gudam jirnadigam sa uttamaya matra uttamaya matra yes yes food yes food has to be digested or yes no no food has to be digested then uttama matra then again it will take 8 hours yes it will take the whole day that's what i said okay that full day when you start in the morning hours you give simple uh, uh, gritam it will be digested then around you know depends on the person maybe 2 o'clock also it take and once again the food should be very light we will not be giving high five food and all either usham very very uh, you know like soup kind of thing you know so simple usham or even uh, this uh, uh, you know kanji or something very very light you know it will take like another 3 4 hours to digest then maybe like in the evening hours like 5 o'clock or something you give the once again so it digest the whole okay so some people in the midnight they do you know when you come uh, when you give this the excellent dose always it creates the problem so that's the reason why you have to always you know it's a very tricky situation so i give according to the patient maximum like 30 ml 50 ml not more than that because if you go more than that practically i am saying it is creating trouble they are not able to see sleep they vomit all those stuffs so maybe nowadays the strength is not good or something okay so initially i give like 30 ml this what i practice then i give this simple diet once it is you know it will take maximum 2 3 hours it will be digested then you give light diet that will take another 3 4 hours to digest then once again the you know another 50 ml of ghee maximum you know that will be comfortable to the patient so it can be continued like 3 days 5 days or 7 days also this is not mentioned in any text so i just follow according to the rules of acharya either 3 days 5 days or 7 days how i continue that once again according to the patient some people maximum 3 days they will say sir i can't do it because of aversion they will say i can't do it so 
you are forced to stop only you know if some people can go until seven days also so once again it you know you cannot be nowadays you know the patients are like that it's very difficult to convince them to drink uh, sneha pana and all so somehow you know in the middle path you have to take so it depends on the patient's um, you know comparisons i decide three days five days or seven days okay so yeah. which diseases mainly you are bph and infertility okay in these two cases only i use sir yeah brinen prostate hypertrophy and this infertility female or male both infertility cases i am using vasti amayantakam okay then in female infertility inter i go for uh, this pala surface or da, da, this uh, dadi madi gridam okay these two or sometimes i go with kalyanakam also yeah i give medicated only ma as i said the initially i spoke about you know so i believe in uh, this medicated ghee okay because that's what i follow okay no very light and like you should semi solid you will never give solid food if you give solid food it will act as a stomach irritant no 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 if you give chapati and all definitely will vomit it should be semi solid or even soup kind of thing very light like yusham okay or this mandam or it's it can be any kind of simple soup like vegetable soup sometimes in the third day fourth day and all people will not take this yusham always so i make like vegetable soups okay very watery without starch no only once ma only once yes because it will take the whole day okay the morning to evening so only once he will uh, he or she will eat okay because that uh, because after that also we are going to give the gritam so it needs to get digested okay so it will take the whole day so we can yeah. say this is somewhat like samana sneha only because just to proceed yes it is samana sneha only or you can say because the food is going in between you can say brahmana sneha also no problem but it is uh, you know uh it is only we are giving for dosha samana only okay sir as per mention you are in context of aushadha pana seven pana mm -hmm. so sir what is that means we have to administer after it take of food na yes so after the next name pana that means name should be consumed after intake of food yes that is in uttara bhaktikam uh, you know it should be after food yeah. uttara bhaktikam okay so first food then followed by uh, gritam or thailam okay uttara bhaktikam okay whereas uh, yes sir no mootra vikaras or mootra ashmari and all ava peedakam yes yes only in bahu sirishagatham sorry about my slide this what confused okay yes yes so in bahu i am making it very clear in bahu sirishagatham uttara bhaktikam in mootra javikaras okay it is ava peedakam okay just after food or after digestion of lagu super chicken after digestion after digestion. yes but sir it will not be possible according to this law in order pardon sir according to this law the mudra yoga is indicated hmm mudra yoga is to pass the process of digestion hmm what the dose before food then we are giving uh, time for digestion hmm then we are giving and then it is digested and then highest dose is given yes that's a said you know it is give, it is said highest dose but practically it is not possible why because it has to digest in 24 hours because if you give high dose what are the complication i found they are vomiting and they are not sleeping so they are getting heavy headaches so it is impossible to so this what i do 30 ml i give first then i give light diet when it is digested maximum 50 to 60 ml i give this is basically what i practice because initially i started giving like 200 250 ml and all literally within hour they vomit so no so after the digestion of food okay so in the if you see the text uttara bhaktam after food they said okay whereas this food must be light food and it should be digested once it is digested immediately when the appetite occurs you give this okay this is how it is you don't see much explanations there 
only this. I think it will be better to use Brahm Bhakt means much matra of his name. For Char Bhakt, we will use less matra. So at night, it is easy for digestion. See, you are talking about the Ava Pedaka, right? Yeah. So that's what it is said in Yojana Dvayam. I already explained. It can be both the ways. Okay? Whereas what happens if you use higher dose? The, I tried both. I will tell you what happens. Once again, this is the practical issue. So when you give the higher dose, sometimes the person will not develop appetite even like midnight. In some cases, they will never develop. They say, sir, I am having still nausea. I don't have any appetite. I don't feel like eating food. So in that case, how you will practice this? You cannot give food, then followed by once again one more dose, you may not give. So that is the reason why I started practicing with the simple, my mild dose first, okay, our dose, then mild food, light food, then followed by little bit of higher dose. As I said, there also I am not giving the uttama dose because it is, practically it is difficult. Patient cooperation is not there. And we cannot say blame them also because it's an unusual taste for them. Because if you see, this is a, all of a sudden you are giving the, you know, of course, before this also three, three to five days that Amapachana must be done. This is very important. After that only even this uh, uh, Avapedaka should be given, okay? But in that case also, maybe as I said, nowadays people are become our sattva or the strength is less. We are not able to go with uh, that higher dose. It is becoming impractical. But this BPA Chandal, no, the frequency of urination is really reducing. In these four or five days only you see, they don't get up even in the night. Okay, that I attribute sometimes this medicine or when, when, when we give this much of snehapana, no, they feel very tired. They sleep very well. So they may not get up also. So I don't know, you know, how it is happening, but it can be both also. Okay, in infertility cases also, especially, you know, uh, if you see this uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome or uh, this uh, uh, endometriosis or uterine wall thickening, you know, rather than going with uh, normal sneha panandal, this is really, really giving mild edge on it. Okay. Any more doubt? Time limit is seven days. Yes, because it is not mentioned in the texts. How many days we should give like that? Pardon, sir? So in the mild dose, pratakala in the mild dose should be given. Okay. Then, uh, once it is digested, food is given. Then the higher dose is given. Okay. See, it is, as I said, it is not for shodhana. It should be shamana. You know, when the person is having good appetite. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. No, no. It is sorry. It is of our pedaka. See, Uttara Bhakti can forget. It is only for Bhagasir Shagatam. Okay, only Bahu Sir Shagadam it is uh, said. So uh, that is my mistake, but that's nice. We, we got into a nice mode of, uh, you know, this one, it's interaction. Okay, shall we go next slide? Okay, next slide. Okay, next slide. Ah, this is Shodhana Snehapana. So basically, Prakupita. Dosha Shodhana Artham Ubejjamana Snehana. And if you want to, you know, I think because my book is already sold, it's not there. But I have a soft copy. I can give it to you about Uttara Bhakti. I wrote uh, Avapiyadakam almost 10 pages. Okay, it is there uh, in my laptop. I can give it to you, okay. And Uttara Bhakti also I have covered it. So, uh, maybe once we finish, if we have time, I will uh, uh, teach that also. I will give, uh, you can uh, you can just collect that data from that. You can use it, no problem, okay. So, when you see, Shuddhi Artham Punar Ahare Nishay Jirne Pibay Naraha Istane Hestane Jirne Evanne Sneha Achaha Shuddhya De Bahu So, it should be given in the early morning before person developing the appetite, okay, but after the digestion of previous day food. This is the criteria. After the digestion of previous day food, but before developing the appetite, it should be given. Then only it will act as a Shodhananga Sneha, okay. So this PPT, if you want, you take, okay. I told Namudris, I think I gave it also. So you can use it, no problem. Next slide, okay. So the Sneha must be in the form of Acha Sneha. Okay, so basically, immediately after the digestion of uh, previous day food, okay, so why it is? So basically, our idea of Shodhananga Snehapana is Dosha Utklesha. But when the person is having good appetite, Dosha Utklesha can never happen because 
in the agni bala will be good that will digest once again it will act as a shamana that's why you know hemadri clearly state that our idea of shodhananga sneha pana is dosha utklesha so it should be given when the person is not having hunger whereas the digestion of previous day of food is digested next slide okay excuse me sir sir i have one doubt regarding this uh, we say that uh, up to that time hunger is not there so there is cup of glaze in all the sources so how shodhana this may will spread to whole processes of the body see basically here that we need utkleshana is necessary yeah. so utkleshana you once again if you see the synonym it is prasekam okay so basically if you see utkleshana the equivalent word is prasekam according to sushruta okay so shodhananga snehapana idea is to utkleshana without kapha there cannot be utkleshana so in the morning hours kapha will be more and definitely the food will be digested still the kapha will be there that time only we have to give the snehapana then it will help to have good dosha utklesham so if you see dosha this utklesham vasti also where you we use tilapishtam mandal so tilapishtam is the best example for dosha utklesham okay which does kapha utklesham dosha utklesham so that's why it should be given that time because kapha need to be there then only because without kapha there is dosha no dosha utklesham that is the reason why it is given that time okay yeah okay so once again if you see maximum is 3 days and uh, sorry minimum is 3 days maximum is 7 days so uh, once again boja says for vata it is 7 days pitta it is 5 days it is like vasti kapha it is 3 days okay it is boja's opinion so basically depends on the prakriti but these things you can say for maybe swastha person not for the athura okay next slide okay so this is about the difference the so shamana sneha always for dosha sneha shamana and it is always higher dose whereas shodhana sneha we give milder dose and once again we go with higher dose then brahmana sneha okay smaller and it is administered maybe like 15 days or a month this and all not mentioned in any text but practically i am telling okay next slide so we will come to arohana shodhananga sneha pana that's what we practice nowadays right so basically this arohana means rising or ascending okay so classical reference if you see classical reference you don't see any clear cut evidence of this arohana snehana karma you don't see this in anywhere where they said give the gritam or tailam or vasa majja in a you know uh, like rising or ascending order increase every day little little quantity like that it is not mentioned but you know i made one attempt you know in uh, if you see this ashtanga hrdaya sutra sthana 16th chapter 17th and 18th sloka there is one interpretation okay this is my personal interpretation i try to find out whether it is really available in classics yes that kalyana karaka i come later he is the first person then vangasana also told in the you know this one uh, uh, in ballataka you know sneha pana but my idea is whether we can try to find whether it is there in our classics brahat rais okay so brahat rais this is my interpretation of course kalyanakara you have later he came in the 70 at uh, that and all it's it's obvious that we'll see next so this is my way of understanding of this shlokam okay next slide so if you see agnyada koshta purusha uttama matra vishaye purvam hrisiye sim kalpet tato madhyamam tata uttamam cha prakalpet evam madhyama matra vishaye hrisiye sim riswa matra vishaye api hrisiye sim prakalpet agnyada koshtehi bahu kuriyat jeevita samshayam so if you see this read in between the line so without knowing the koshta this line is very important agnyada koshtehi bahu kuriyat jeevita samshayam all of a sudden you cannot give a yeah, bahu ba, excellent dose uttama matra you cannot administer to a person in excellent dose if you administer it can even kill the person so then how to go about it so if you see he says like first give rc rc understand the koshta then you can decide whether to go for uh, uttama matra or madhyama matra or rc matra so this is the shloka which is mentioned for so test dose must be given first then to understand the koshta then you can go for uttama or madhyama or avara whereas if you see this word tataha and tato is mentioned 
ఓకే సో ఇఫ్ యూ సీ సంస్కృతం యాజ్ ఎ సెడ్ ఆయుర్వేద యూ కెన్ ఇంటర్ప్రెట్ ఇన్ ఎనీథింగ్ ఓకే సో ఇఫ్ యూ సీ క్లాసిక్స్ ఆర్ ఇఫ్ యూ స్టడీ ద యూనో సంస్కృత యూనో దిస్ లిటరేచర్ సో ఇఫ్ యూ సీ ది వర్డ్ తతో క్యాన్ బి ఇంటర్ప్రెటెడ్ యాజ్ సిమిలర్ టు దట్ ఆర్ ఆఫ్టర్ వర్డ్స్ ఆర్ ఫాలోడ్ బై సో ఇఫ్ యూ టేక్ దిస్ ఫాలోడ్ బై ఇఫ్ యూ సే రిసియసీ మధ్యమ దెన్ ఉత్తమ okay if you see if, if you take it as a tato as followed by what we can understand so first hrisyasi followed by madhyama followed by uttama so once again according to me that is arohana okay because it's a sequence okay then the literal meaning of tataha is more over is tataha means it is more over or further more or in addition to okay so the following narration can be translated as initially the physician must administer the test dose followed by hriswa matra then madhyama matra and then uttama matra sneha pana if not done so sudden administration of uttama matra can kill the patient okay so this is my way of interpreting this sloka of arunadatta okay it is in the commentary so you may agree or you may not agree but this is what my understanding so because i tried to find answer in brahatris okay when it comes to swedan also i'll tell you know i'm not against of because my wife also from kerala so this spiritual they say it's a kerala treatment no it is there in sushruta okay then chauti tirumal okay the pa- padabhyanga in kalari andal they use it is an also not also specialist in kerala it is also there in sushruta i can give you the reference in vyayama context he told this okay so pirichal also he explained so it is there in brahatri so i always try to find answer in brahatris okay so this is my way of interpreting because i want to find answer in brahatri okay so this is my interpretation next slide okay so if you read in between the lines okay we can understand that depends on agni bala koshta if the proper dose is given so this is the criteria if you understand the person's agni bala koshta i will tell you how to test the agni and all later okay definitely you will get some mixed nikta lakshanas in seven days okay so once again why we can we should go for arohana i have written here this uh, last paragraph if you read what is the logic behind this arohana why we cannot keep on give the same dose so if you see to achieve the samyak snigdha lakshana one cannot keep administering the same dose every day for 3 to 7 days because the static dose will never help in achieving samyak snigdha lakshanas after all the body will digest easily suppose if you are giving the same dose it will get digest easily since it knows how much time it is needed for the digestion of given fat with the stored previous memory so basically this what happens with opioids so if you give certain drugs they develop that because body knows you know so same concept that's what i feel so the stored memory will be there okay this you give the static dose every day 30 ml 50 ml or 70 ml and body knows within this it digest so accordingly it opens up all the enzymes and other things so it will get digest so when it is digestion is happening on the same day how the dosha utkleshana can happen or how you will get the samyak snigdha lakshanas so that could be also one of the reason why later stages they went for this arohana kraham krama this is my understanding okay next slide okay so this once again i wrote about the aim of shodhananga snehapana is dosha utkleshana and it is only achieved if the excessive fat is eliminated with the stools without undergoing digestion if a fixed dose is administered it will get digested because of the dose would be in small quantity we don't have an option of giving high dose from day one because it can create lots of complications or may even lead to death so we have to we cannot give the small dose if you give small dose then it will not create dosha utkleshana whereas okay we will, shall we go let us go for high dose means it can also create complication then how to go how to fix this dose that's where this arohana karma comes so that could be the reason why this is my way of understanding they went for this arohana karma okay so this is i wanted to share this logic okay so hope i am correct okay right so kalyanaka karaka before him vangasena okay but he mentioned under ballataka sneha that's why i didn't take it uh, seriously whereas kalyanaka karaka is the first person to explain about sneha pana that is shodhananga sneha pana in arohana 
method okay this swayam nara sneha atha pare gritam tilod bhava va krama varditam pibet so this krama varditam word so krama varditam is nothing but sequential order okay next slide okay so basically this is how it is pre operative operative post operative so i'm not going to go for it i'll just give you the sop next slide okay so basically agni must be assessed properly before shodhananga sneha pana in order to get the samyak snigdha lakshanas so agni is okay assessed by ahara jarna shakti and abhyavana shakti these two criteria acharyas already gave okay so we have to understand this you already know this and next slide so how to go about it okay you see in this is one exception before going to the agni okay so if the patient is having bahu sleshma he is stula you know these are all the small small points mentioned in our text so before giving this shodhananga sneha pana definitely these things must be kept in mind where if you are trying to give sneha pana for a stulya person or if you are trying to give sneha pana in utklesha number like uh, prameha okay this must be followed then only shodhananga must be given okay so if you see vishama agni before administering sneha pana to him use of ruksha dravyas so definitely ruksha karma must be done before or dravyas internally which causes rukshatva in the body must be given because excessive kleda we need kleda for shodhananga sneha pana but excessive kleda should not be there in these vyadis kleda will be more so we need to bring down that kleda then we must go for shodhananga sneha pana okay so kashaya kadu tikta rasas is advised so like ingo achadi churnam in order to get proper samyak snigdha lakshanas so these drugs remove as i said too much kleda here don't literally take kleda and bahu kapha okay but it's too much in these vyadis will be there so we have to bring down them then we have to go for with little kleda and little bahu kapha we have to go for shodhananga sneha pana so these small things must be very must be followed very properly if you want to get very good results okay then if you see in extreme vata condition this is also it is mentioned in our text in extreme vata condition vasti karma along with phalavarti be must be administered to correct the agni so you see how important to correct how important agni plays a role you know how important is agni before this shodhananga sneha pana so without proper agni you should never ever go for it so these things must be properly followed if there is too much vata condition if you see like you know uh, there is a constipation or too much rook uh, then you have to remove okay that here basically if you see this pala palavarti or vasti i think they are talking about the constipation severe constipation problems okay or apana vaigunya so in those cases vasti and palavarti must be used then shodhananga sneha pana can be used next slide okay then kosta vicharana which is also very very important so these are the practically if you see how to understand the you know krura kosta so of course in our text it is said kshiram ikshurasam gudam and that slogan is there you know and kshirena bhi vrichyate pitta pitta koshta person but practically how to understand the koshta this is my way of uh, saying so if you see the krura koshta sometimes he will pass tools after straining regular bowel movement will not be there for sure he will pass tools once in two or three days hardly any con- water content will be seen in the stools so if you see these criteria ask the patient these questions if he says this definitely you can know of course prakriti also will be analyzing after that you go with this you will understand it is vata koshtam okay next slide then if you see murdu koshtam if you see once again it is pitta koshta so at least twice a day they will have okay definitely they will say sir most of the time i go two times a day then rarely they will have solid stools okay that is banana stools they will never have okay and they don't have to strain for normal bowel movement they go and sit and early morning definitely they will go first thing they will go just brushing and going to the toilet okay definitely pitta koshta okay next then madhyama koshta if you see they will have solid banana stools maximum once daily no strain or bit strain is necessary to pass stools they need a little bit they may push and it will be a nice big banana stools okay that is kapha so just you know this is one simple method to understand the koshta next slide okay so basically when we come to sneha pana we say deepana pachanam but it is not correct it should be pachanam followed by deepana 
okay it is clearly mentioned by delhana that's why i have written pachanam first okay because main aim is ama should be removed then agni will be all right so pachanam followed by deepanam in sushruta andal okay they read what they acharya said only pachana only there is no deepanam at all whereas when you say deepanam pachana deepanam pachana it, it has become like amko aadat padgi esi but it is really originally it is pachanam okay so what you know about pachanam so basically what it does is you can see pachana dravyas is pipalyadi ganam or mustadi gana churnam you can give so pachana dravyas stimulate duodenum which in turn secrete digestive enzymes and hormones which are responsible for digestion and metabolism and they stimulate the liver to enhance bile secretion and pachana dravyas stimulate the pancreas to secrete pancreas lipase etc so that the snehapana can be digested easily okay so this is you know i just wanted to say why we are giving this pachana what could really happen in the uh, you know gi tract or in the you know physiological level okay next slide okay so importance of why it should be given okay snehasya paanat puram cha datavyam mrudu beshajam hutashasya uttejanam koshta lagav karicha okay so this is very very important and vibanda okay vibanda chapi jayet okay it removes the vibanda also this is the important thing so mrudu beshajam to improve the hutasham that is agni because it helps to it makes the koshtava koshtam lagu and it helps for digestion and metabolism of the fat nothing else and it removes the vibandham okay so basically if you see this deepana pachana they stimulate the vagus nerve and glossopharyngeal nerve and also stimulates fundus and phylorus of the stomach this phenomena stimulate the agni deepthi and enhances the ama pachana okay in the deepana dravyas due to their bitter and pungent taste promotes the gastric juice juice and facilitate the digestion these drugs sensitize the oral taste buds but that thus facilitating saliva secretion so when you give this basically because the digestion st- should start from saliva mouth itself so these drugs do all this uh, you know karmas that is the reason why we give this okay they also induce gastrin secretion a hormone which stimulates hcl production you know this thing this phenomena is very very important then only the digestion of sneha snehana given snehana can takes place that is the reason why our acharya has clearly stated about pachana and deepana so this is how pachana deepana drugs works okay next slide okay so how to stop once again it is not mentioned our uh, text how many days we should give deepana pachana so pachana is nothing but the comes under langana ch- chikitsa so if you want to understand when how many days to give if you find out the samyak langana lakshanas okay this purisha visargam gatra lagom hritkanda shuddhi okay if you see all these things in person so you can understand your pachana is properly done if there is no constipation okay if the person is feeling light good appetite so samyak langana lakshanas can be taken for samyak pachana lakshanas so this is not mentioned in the text so this you can follow okay so basically it is for given for 3 to 7 days okay for the better outcome of uh, sneha pana okay and it is once again apatarpana chikitsa maximum it can be given okay uh, three to five days or seven days like sneha pana only because patient cannot tolerate because it is a apatarpana chikitsa so until wait just see the symptoms once you see the niram avastha it's fine okay next slide okay so once again diet is very very important so bojyo annam matraya okay పశ్యన్ అభి అండ్ పీతవాన్ అభి సో ద్రవం ఉష్ణ అభిషంది నా అది స్నిగ్ధం అసంగరం సో ద పర్సన్ హూ ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు టేక్ స్నేహపాన దట్ ఈస్ ఇన్ అష్టాంగ హృదయం ఇట్ ఈస్ సెట్ పీతవాన్ అభి ఆర్ ద పర్సన్ హూ ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు టేక్ స్నేహపాన ఆర్ ద పర్సన్ హూ హ్యాడ్ ఆల్రెడీ టేకన్ స్నేహపాన ఈ మస్ట్ హ్యావ్ అ లైట్ డయట్ అండ్ ద్రవం ఉష్ణం అనభిషంది నా అతి సింగ్రం నా అతి సంగ్రం దర్ షుడ్ నాట్ బి మచ్ మిక్చర్స్ okay it should be drava ushna and not like you know uh, seasoned you know tadka nahi jyada dalne ka usme so that is nadi sankaram okay so this is ideal dose this is according to 
kashyapa okay so the ghee which is taken in the morning and digested well by by afternoon without producing tiredness weakness burning sensation in the gi tract and loss of taste must be understood as a best dose of ghee and it is best for madhyama dosha it is from kashyapa samhita okay so if this can happen that means you fixed a correct dose if not the dose is not correct it will come once you start in you know, a practicing it, it it is very easy thing okay next slide then what type of this snehana should be used okay here once again i am telling about processed or unprocessed you can see according to angasana he took a middle path sneham pakkam apakkam va పాయత్వా చికిత్సక యూ కెన్ డిసైడ్ ఏదర్ పక్వ స్నేహ అపక్వ స్నేహ యూ కెన్ యూస్ ఓకే దెన్ యథా దోషం యథాకాలం యథావ్యాధి యథాబలం ఓకే సో వన్స్ అగైన్ దిస్ ఈస్ ద క్రైటీరియా యునో టు చూస్ వాట్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ స్నేహన యూ వాంట్ ఓకే దిస్ యథా దోషం యథాకాలం యథాబలం యథావ్యాధి దిస్ ఈస్ ద క్రైటీరియా ఓకే then next whether you need to use processed or unprocessed vangasana says either processed or uh, unprocessed as i said earlier according to gaidasa sarvada viruddhameva okay so unprocessed is sarvada viruddhameva it should not be unprocessed should be never used according to gaidasa okay so next slide sir the loss of taste when it is occurred when we are taking maximum dose of snehan yes when you take proper dose okay the person will not like you know that is a, a very short period of time due until the digestion happens no the taste will not be there once the digestion is finished jeer after jeerna lakshana the taste will come back that's what he mentioned there okay so then if you see uh, you know pradana karma okay i already Uh, told you about this even kalyana kara it is uh, you know said about how to you know like vada with lavana pitta with kshara trikatu okay this already i explained next slide okay so basically in grita pana in prameha this also we have seen you know in stula or prameha you can see patient suffering from kushta prameha and shofa should not be violated with snehana which is harmless and processed with pippali harita can tirfla so once again you see here processing is coming so these are the answers you find in our classics you know in some places many places they use only uh, pure okay but if you see the classics the you know answers are scattered and it is say if you can see according to the classics it is always processed that is the thing okay maybe for swastha person you can use the pure ghee no problem you don't need to use because he is swastha already whereas if the disease condition because you say in kushta mandal in psoriasis you just see you give pure ghee and you give either gugul tiktakam and you see the results sir in swastha pure ghee means murchita murchita yes krita murchana yes murchita krita so one example is as sir psoriasis you one you give uh, this uh, murchita krita and other one you give the either uh, gugul tiktakam or aragvada maha tiktakam you will definitely see the good results with this uh, you know processed ghee okay so because we have short time we have to give best results nowadays that's what people are expecting so it is always my theory is go with the the samskarita kritam and for that substantiating evidence i gave okay next slide okay then once again as i said rishiyasi matra which is digested in one yama so before giving even shamana sneha or shodana sneha it must be given so 25 to 30 ml is the rishiyasi matra according to the text also it is mentioned okay next slide in sharang dara it is mentioned okay so assessment of agni and kosta prior to first day of sneha pana so dr vasan patil he made this uh, beautiful calculation so this definitely if you use it na definitely you will get this some excellent dilakshana so test dose into time taken for digestion divided by the given dose so that will be your next day dose next slide so if you see sop for sneha pana okay so you always keep all the emergency medicines if it is necessary because sometimes they will vomit because one case i uh, what happened she developed hiccups because of the you know vagus stimulation it went into until like 24 hours continuous constant okay like she developed hiccups along with vomiting also because 
she drank it very fastly so this also i started uh, uh, you know thinking you know when it comes to sneha pana whether to give as a liquid or ask the person to swallow as it is okay when it is uh, because what i found out see when you are pushed to the corner you are you know you you make some ideas it can be wrong in others point of view so when i was i used to see lots of foreign patients when i was practicing in kunnur so these people the smell and taste they will not so what i used to do is i little bit freeze the ghee okay i freeze the ghee and i give in the big spoons ask them to you know close i close the eyes close the nostrils ask them to just swallow so it just like it goes inside whereas when you give the liquid they vomit they just literally puke on you so later i found out that rather than giving in the liquid form just giving it as a spoon as a solid form it is helping patient to take it easily this is what i started practicing rather than giving it in a because after that you give hot water because the people can say if you give like ghee like that it will not be digested so you are going to give hot water it will definitely you know uh, liquefy that ghee so that's what my i started doing practically so in the spoons i started giving if it is what you know liquid form i just freeze it it's it's easy for the patient to take whereas when you give it in the watery form or like liquid form it's it's getting uh, the third day fourth day and all when you are going to the especially in kushta and all simple 30 50 ml and all will not work i am telling you you must go at least 750 ml and all definite you know so 750 or sometimes 800 ml in the sixth day seventh day you should go to have a nice effect so in those times these ideas helps actually okay in the initial days fine when you give the large doses this is what you know i started practicing because somehow i want them to have okay and i never give thailam you know it's very very difficult okay whereas especially only in asthmatic cases okay where thailam is really mentioned maybe like sherabala or and one more idea i developed as i said that may be wrong also because i i have to make people to have right so what i started practicing you know this kshirabala 101 capsules comes you know i ask them to swallow like 25 like every 5 minutes like 3 4 5 like that so in the span of like 10 15 minutes like 25 or 30 you will be gone inside so you will have like that 25 ml 30 ml so you know people may not agree with this as i said but these are the you know ideas in that person he is not ready to do but shodhana is very much important he is suffering from kushta then how to go about it right and sometimes even i used to think that how about putting a tube and just pouring it of course it's difficult you know it's a, it's very practically it is difficult right because you know these are the areas where practically you feel difficulties so either kshirabala or this the person who has like severe this ankylosing ankylosing spondylitis and all no i give this gandha thailam like this so i dose you see really you can practice this in 2 3 hours the pain literally goes down because of the you know the gandha thailam is very good for bagna and everything and it is very good for uh, you know inflammation also so when you give that much excellent dose it is really really it takes care of the you know pain hi see as i said like you know i start with like initial like 15 to 20 capsules but some people vomit some people you know develop some giddiness also okay but they slept after 2 3 hours they felt much better because sometimes when you when they have severe pain you don't have much pain management so something you wild ideas comes whereas you know otherwise it's easy to go with allopathy you know if you want to avoid so you need to find out on now with this vedi herbals is come out with this cannabis you know that that orissa company canaflam and all so it is really working very well with this uh, pain relief so you give but the side effect is some people get these hallucinations so they are uh, you they are bring they have this purified cannabis ganja is there in that infused in coconut oil so the vedi herbals from uh, i know this uh, orissa they have these capsules okay they are really good uh, sir, 
that is Sinhana process, Shobhan and Sinhana process is completely for the dosha Krishna. But there is some, uh, there is some assumption that if we are using process healing, it will do dosha samana. Yes. That the simple answer is look at the dose and look at the time. As I said, that's why I said these two criteria. The dosha samana or dosha shodhana can uh, you know properly happen if you follow these two criteria. Dose and time of administration. When you follow this, any dose you give it can act as a dosha samana. That's why Acharya said this. Time and dose as simple as that when you follow this any ghee you give it will and initially when you give mild dose it may do dosha shamana but in second third day onwards you are going to give more dose there is no question of dosha shamana happens there that's it okay so next uh, you know so lipid profile okay and uh, make sure the patient does not develop appetite before shodhana and snehapana and do proper uh, you know rukshana and all the necessity things jala hot water yusha everything you keep next slide okay and continue the process till some extent the lakshana is observed don't stop try to tell patient you know because many people want to stop in between somehow you know you talk to them you persuade them that you talk to them most of the time they understand when you tell them okay then so as i said for swastha for cleansing pure cow's ki can be used as i said this is what i wrote samskaro gunantaradanam so this is also an answer why we should use samskarita gridam or samskaritaram because samskaro gunantar adanam okay so samskara with herbs may cause some internal constant change in the ghee thus it makes the ghee highly versatile and safe for snehapana so that is also one of the reason why i consider it should be samskarita gritam okay next slide okay so advice to the patient these are simple advices you can always when you know whatever he can follow you know he must tell like using hot water or not doing exercise traveling and this is very important only after developing proper appetite the patient needs to take food if not don't ever ask him because sometimes you know the false appetite develop you you would have heard about the concept of false appetite after one hour two hour only they will say doctor i have appetite no that is a false appetite actually that time if you give the food no he will vomit so you must identify that you know between the false appetite and the real appetite because other symptoms will be there in the false appetite only high you will feel hunger but still the nausea will be there whereas once the ghee is digested he will develop appetite but there won't be any nausea so this one small uh, thing you can identify between false appetite and the real appetite okay so then patient must maintain celibacy okay and should be advised not to sleep during the day time next slide okay so then proper food also as i said very mild simple a samskaram even before even it should be started even during the deepana pachana days the food plays a very important role so even during the deepana pachana days the food should be very mild and simple and even after snehapana shodhana also so that entire process the food plays a very very important role patyam is very important in this otherwise you will not get uh, good results you will get results but it will not be the optimum because i have in my 15 years of practice this is what i have seen when you when the person follows very religiously the diet no excellent results are coming whereas many people don't it, it's a kind of compromise only okay okay next next slide okay then once again he must be advised not to have food too quickly or not slow not you know slowly and once again satme ahara must be you know try to give which he likes don't try to force him okay you have to have this only some people may not like kanji so go with like yusham with uh, watery as i said you know i go with sometimes simple vegetable soups which is preferred with pumpkin and other things so we can modify okay so that it can be palatable make it palatable that's it it is not necessary that you have to always give the kanji after 3 4 days by seeing the kanji you will puke doctor please leave me i will run away yaar kuch nahi chahiye mujhko this happens so somehow you make it palatable okay and that will help him and as a once again nice smell okay will help him because you know this good smell is very important during snehapana you know the entire room and other place. of course not strong smell but very mild nice smell will help him to you know 
digest as well as that irritation or the nausea feeling will go down okay and once again you can ask him to have this lime okay uh, this uh, foreigners what they used to do you know they put the lime in the tongue they will just rub it with its salt okay to just stop this uh, you know uh, this nausea they it, it does help actually so salt with lime just in the rub it in the tongue you know it helps for the digestion as well as it's very good it, it improves the taste buds okay and one more thing i will tell you in the large doses when i give in the seventh day and all no i started practicing i i started giving large dose with domperidone okay yes okay so it is or you know this aunt and cetera so in the 750 ml or 100, you know 8 and i don't want them to puke so i give with this is my new practice i started it is helping really as i said it may be unconventional but i want the results i always believe the person is spending money and trust in you nothing speaks only your results speaks you talk so much theory no problem how you will get a good name as a doctor you go to the doctor he will treat or she will treat udhar gaya to acha hota hai wo aadmi ke paas jao this is what people needed they don't think much so i started giving domperidone in uh, kerala there is one place uh, where my uh, student is practicing where it is like skin and hair and uh, only f- they are doing uh, treatment for this so they have developed one method so all allopathic doctors are there and ayurveda doctor he is there so it's a combination of therapies so what they do is after vamana directly they put iv to stop the dehydration and other complications they do the vamana all samyak vamana lakshanas everything happens so immediately they put iv so i asked him mohavid sir people are comfortable they don't get any dehydration symptoms and our our is done vamana we have done whereas we are you know just uh, this replenishing this fluid loss and he is saying i said what is the difference like do you feel any difference in the results he showed me all the photographs videos everything in psoriasis or lichen you know he, they are getting normal results only so he said we don't want to have any shock or we don't want the patient to feel any kind of uncomfortness so like after vamana we give this and after this rakta mokshana they give this anticoagulants sorry coagulants to you know stop the bleeding complications so these are some practices as i said shuddha ayurveda people may not agree with this okay but this what i practice i give domperidone like in the large doses because i want to give the large dose i don't want to give compromised dose like 200 ml 150 ml that will not help at all you practice and see i'm telling you very practically especially this kushtandal okay my thesis on phd is obesity of course neapana is contraindicated there once again there also answer is there avastham prapya nirdishtam kushtina ambasti karma cha finished okay vina tarkane ya siddhiri adricha siddhiri avise so i am using my tarkam so i am giving dom peridon finished ayurveda has answers for everything okay so these are you know you may not agree some of you or many of you but as i said just you know these are the practical difficulties i am seeing with the patients so i started developing these kind of practices and you know i don't see any problem in that the result everything is same only okay so how much dose in a single day you are giving for grandpa 750 800 i have gone with two dose which one sir yeah i am coming next sir next slide yeah so you can see these are the you know medicines where you can keep okay if the person has this side effects like sirashula bramam shulam arochakam agni mandyam ajirnam this is what i keep it's up to you you know i am not here to teach you do give this give that you are all learned scholars you know better than me also some of you so you can use whatever okay so this is my idea of doing things okay if you want you can use your own things okay next slide where it is ma 
that is narikela lavanamma ah narikela lavanam you know narikela is you know that right it is in available in kotakal also that's a wrong spelling thank you it's na narikela lavanam okay ma so next slide then once again materials required you know next slide we will go faster okay next slide you know ayurved you know then these are pana kalina lakshanas i don't know they told me to finish the swedam also uh, until 1 o'clock we have ma actually i was sorry i was supposed to come on 8 but we i had a delegation from israel so i was uh, you know need to be there that's why so then these are the pana kalina lakshanas hrilasa chardi aruchi trishna okay and udgara so when the, after the drinking of the ghee this is what you will see in a patient they will come and tell these symptoms next slide okay then jire mana lakshana if you see shiro ruja brahma nishtivana murcha sada arati klamehi janiya beshajam jiriyati okay this is undergoing digestion okay next slide then once again these are the possible reasons i wrote okay whether i want to like you can read through i think okay so these are the possible reasons uh, i wrote what could be the reason behind if you see nausea so the high fat intake irritates the stomach and the stomach irritation stimulates the vomiting centers of the brain which causes nausea the abnormal smell of sneha dravya also cause nausea okay then if you see if you put inside of avastha paka the production of kapha takes place in the first phase of avastha paka which might be the reason why the person feel lala srava after taking sneha pana headache stomach irritation by sneha pana can cause uh, headache as well as rasakshaya dehydration which is usually observed during sneha pana is the main reason for shiro ridge because in the third day fourth day definitely there will be dehydration because the food is starch is going less carbs are less so when there is less carbs this happens okay then daha so here daha means my interpretation is in the stomach not in the body okay daham it is read what it is said only daham but you see the context daham here is only in the stomach according to me not in the body so burning sensation in the stomach sore belching so during the sneha pana definitely you see they will have this sore belchings will be there of course when you use tiktaka mandal the the bitter belching will come whereas when you use google tiktaka or varna those things the sore belching will be there occurs due to gastric irritation and excessive gastric secretions next slide okay then sadam and klamam of course when there is too much of uh, fat in the stomach the blood supply will be less so the sorry the blood supply will be more so the brain will have less blood supply because stomach has to work hard to digest that uh, given fat it is too much okay and one more thing so when there is so much of blood circulation occurs in the stomach when the brain don't get enough oxygen of course the person feels tired and sleepy and weakness and once again if you see lack of food and nutrition okay because the carbs will be very less and only high fat is given so ketosis happens that is also one of the reason why the person feels weak tired and fatigue then shabda dvesham aversion towards sound occurs due to rasadadukshayam okay definitely rasadadukshayam will be there during the digestion phase of sneha pana because nothing is eaten and nothing, because rasadadu increases when the palatable food is given right nicely works and it is not unpalatable so that is why it happens then trishna muga muga shosham murcha and tama okay so if you see i have written about this glycogen okay and about this carbohydrate you know these metabolism is impaired so when there is less carbs when the less carbs are available in the body you can see it, this is a physiology so definitely the person will have dehydrated symptoms so this dry mouth thirsty are the symptoms of dehydration and less carbohydrates okay then once again the insulin secretion is hampered that's the reason why when you give sneha pana the uh, you know you can literally see the blood sugar goes down very well and even you can bring down the insulin the you know the insulin uh, dose also during sneha pana you can bring down very very less that is because it takes care of the the insulin secretion you know and the glycogen secre you know this conversion everything is different during sneha pana that is the reason why this trishna muga shoshan murcha tama so once again this dizziness fainting occurs when there is a lack of food and nutrition once again that is the okay reason next slide depends you cannot stop you need you need to check the diabetes and you have to 
if the person is on insulin you have to adjust the dose for sure and i during snehapana at least every 3 days i check uh, especially for a diabetes person because the hypo uh, you know this glycemia is highly dangerous it happened with uh, one of my patient so he was on insulin snehapana was given after that i started doing this practice he went into kind of mild coma because of hypo uh, you know glycemic the, the, the her, his wife was just you know we in despite of uh, recommending and it is our fault also she was just keep giving the same dose of insulin morning and evening so suddenly in the night he got sweating and he started blabbering the hypoglycemic shock happened to him and he went into mild coma he was forced to shift to the allopathic hospital of course by god's grace after 5 6 days he came back so this incident made me to check the diabetes if it is long standing diabetes i check every other day during snehapana and accordingly i you know reduce the dose of insulin or diabetic medicine when you are giving snehapana to diabetic people be careful really i am telling you okay next slide okay so once again these are the symptoms of proper digestion like proper stool color normal amount of flatus okay and these are the things you know when once you get this you understand it's properly digested next slide okay then diet after snehapana once again i told before same as after also next slide okay termination of the uh, course of snehapana so when you get this vadanulomanam gatra mardam tok snigdhata asamhata varchas snigdha varchas gatra lagam so basically when you see this vadanulomanam and you can see the tok snigdhata also and otherwise this fat in the stools not in the stools in the glass it should because sometimes what happens when you keep this criteria as a samyak snigdha lakshana when you give sukumaram gritam in the second third third day itself you know it will the, the ghee uh, will start coming out then we may think it is samyak snigdha lakshana it is not so to to identify this criteria when you give sukumaram gritam it will go with the stools it you know it may not float in the or it will not float in the glass at whereas when you get the samyak snigdha lakshanas literally the person will say in you know i have you know the ghee or you know oil in my hand and in the you know uh, glass at it will float so that is the criteria you have to keep in mind okay next slide okay so once again the samyak snigdha lakshanas you know vadanalam divta agni varcha has snigdha masamata next slide okay so once again how to assess okay the vata anulomanam this is practically i made this maybe later you can uh, take out from my this one so how to assess samyak snigdha lakshanas practically so this method you can follow when you follow this method definitely you can easily assess the samyak snigdha lakshanas okay so for vata anulomanam i gave score this is a score pattern okay just score pattern next slide if you see gatra mardam once again the score pattern then asamhata varchas once again the score pattern next slide okay then snigdha varchas I, i will give the ppt no problem okay snigdha varchas once again you have the score pattern then gatra lagam once again the score pattern okay next slide then snehodgam once again the score pattern so if you see the score pattern to assess samyak snigdha lakshanas so if you get the score of 10 to 13 you can say it is avara samyak snigdha lakshana then if you get the score of 14 to 17 you can say it is madhyama samyak snigdha lakshana and if you say it is 17 to 21 it is pravara samyak snigdha lakshana so this is just for practical purpose you know you can follow when you follow this definitely you will get this uh, you know you will definitely assess the samyak snigdha lakshanas very easily thank you okay next slide so once again this also why it happens you know why vata anulomana happens why agni deepthi happens so this and all you know you can read i will give this to you i don't want to go through because we have to see the swedana also so because my idea was as i said i i wanted to find answers simply reading that's fine but why it is happening what could be the real reason so these are the things i put in my book so when you take the large quantity of ghee what is really happening what is this ketosis what is this autophagy how snehapana could trigger it so all those things i have written in that so next slide 
next slide so too much like you can see gatra mardom so this titoria happens so these are the things you will literally see in the patient next slide then gatra mardom gatra snigdata what is the real reason behind that next okay then about the functional dyspepsia okay so why this person is getting all those things it is really you know i put so many thoughts into that so into the cellular level as well as in the biochemical level and the physiology level i wrote all these things next level okay then what happens clamam and glani angalagom okay next slide then kale sharira vridhi okay so once again how the immune system okay long term health and dieting or medium term long health uh, dieting and fat you know when you take the proper uh, fat how it helps in the immune system so kale sharira vridhi could be happening due to the proper maintaining of the immune system for that i gave the explanation okay next slide then meda druti okay okay once again how it helps in memory how this polyunsaturated fat helps in memory all those things also i have written okay then about this appropriate gene and you know all those things how it helps in preventing alzheimers see that is the reason why in manasega vikaras they told manasarogas to use the gritam i gave one chapter in my book why in manasarogas gritam is preferred how in the recent times you know this uh, fat how best it is helping in stopping the alzheimers and parkinsons even they found out with our own uh, Uh, coconut oil you know all these things are there so our acharyas were great in that that's why they went for the fat medium for the brain okay next slide okay then adi snigdha lakshanas once again i i wrote what is the reason for adi snigdha lakshanas why you get this purisha avipakkam pudi purisha avipravrti or pravahika i you know gave the answers for that also next slide okay then once again pandutvam so pandu is once again we always think it is whitish but it is not if you see the original sanskrit dictionary it is yellowish whitish yellow is paleness of the screen the skin okay so here you can see yellowish uh, you know white you cannot say it is pale skin happens but yellowish white happens that is because of bilirubin you know malabsorption and it is something to do with the bile salts okay next slide then next slide okay then aruchi once again i wrote about what happens with the taste buds when you take this nehapana why the person develop this okay next slide okay then sneha dvesham vakra vakrena kapha udgamaha and utklesham okay so once again it is due to the ketones and other things next slide okay next slide same okay next slide next slide swasakasham okay so next slide and this is the patyam okay for ushnodagam is very very important okay this is patyam okay next slide then adastat sneha darshanam that should have gone later okay and purusha snigdata once again it is something to do with the bile acid malabsorption next slide okay so once again you see these are some you know methods of preparing different soups okay i wrote that also okay next slide see how appeared i put here i was confused there so this is the thing so this is about our pedaka okay that is about uh, uttara bhaktika okay next slide because la i am sorry to say this i prepared in the last minute uh, dr nambudri sir was asking give me the ppt give me the ppt but you know uh, since i am a principal so many you know thing that delegates also came so i am sorry about it okay this is the reason huh? so this is uh, i have written you know you can see where it is given right so related to thighs lower back and kidney disease also can be practiced okay next slide then you can see raktarshas it is by charaka in bleeding piles also you can give and bowel and bladder genito pelvic diseases due to vata okay infertility bph artho roga this where i use ulcerative colitis ibs crohn's disease like that okay next slide okay why is ghee is prepared as i said vata thailam is badda vitkam okay next slide then this is the procedure okay yojana dvayam okay the interpretation we are, which already i gave you okay next slide okay next slide okay in rakta jarshas how it should be given that also i have written okay in the rakta jarshas next slide 
So I went to administer. So you can see it is a kind of Shamana Sneha. So same, okay. Uttama Matra, Riswa Matra. Next slide. How many days? Okay, as I said, it's not written. So maximum seven days. Okay. Next slide. So this is because Prakbhaktam is indicated in Apana. This is the idea behind our Pedakam. Why it is given? Because Prakbhakta is indicated in Apana Vaigunya. So in all these Mahamutra Vikaras, this Apana Vaigunya is there. That's why it is told to use this our Pedakam or before food. Okay. Next. Okay. So this is once again this Bahi Sneham. Uh, next slide. Ah, you see Padagata Chauti Tirmala. So, Carolites, if he's there, don't uh, ang get angry with me, okay? <laughs> so, it is not exclusive of Kerala. It is there in Sushurta, okay? You can see. Vyayama Svinna Gatrasya, Pada Benga Udvarti Tasya Che, okay? You can see. Pada Benga Udvarti Tasya, Pada Mardi Tasya Iti Arna Chandraha. So, this is what they practice as a Chauti Tirmal, okay? So, Pada Benga Udvarti Tasya Iti Pada Bhyam Bahukrita Mardanasya. Hope I am correct, right? Yes. So it's Padagata he is there and Mardanabi Vyayama Antayeva. So it is in contest of Vyayama, Sushrita Acharya told. Okay. So this is about Chauti Tirmal, which is there in our Brahat race. Next I will come to Pirichal. Next slide. Okay. So this is you know food pressure or food massage, it is there in calorie. Okay. Next slide. So Kaya Sekam. Okay. So this is from Sushruta. Okay, Sekaha, Samagna, Anilahrut, Bagna, Sandi, Prasadakaha. Okay, so this is already there, and he, he told to use the Thailam also. Okay, Tata, Tadu, Vurdihi, Sneha, Sikatasya Jayate. You can see Sneha Sikatam. Okay, beautifully it is written. So this is nothing but the Pirichal. Okay, so I'll bath. Nothing but the Pirichal. Next, uh, next slide. So Seka means Sarvanga Parishakaha. Dalhana, okay, pouring all over. It can be ghee. So, whenever it comes to Pirichal or Sekam, we always think only about Thailam. In Pittaja Vigaras, if you see Ashtanga Hridim, Pittasa Sarpishaha Panam, Swadashita Virachanam. The second line, Abhyangana, comes there, he says, Gritam also. In Pitta Vigaras, Abhyanga with Gritam also. So, if you are if the patient can afford, so in many of the skin diseases, I started using Gridha Abhyanga, like Tiktakam or Maha Tiktakam, because it is only we think about Thailam. It's not necessary because it is already written in the text. It can be either Gritam or Thailam. Okay? You can see Thailam, Gritam, Va, Madiman, Yujyat. As simple as that. Okay? So, it can be done either Gritam or Thailam. So, next slide. You can see what are the you know benefits of Parisheka. Okay, Tila Thailam. You can see Parisheka Abhyanga Avaga Dishu. Tila Thailam Prashisete Susurta. Okay. So basically Avasechana. Prakasham Kruste Thairam Malapam Chavasechanam. So these are the uh, you know references. These many references there in Susurta. So spiritual is not only to Kerala. It is there in Sushruta. So it is for all over body. Okay. All right. Sorry, all over uh, in uh, India. Okay. So these are the two references. Of course, they, they gave so much of contribution, the kiris and other things. Okay. But my idea is to find the answer because they would have done it from our texts and they modified it. That's a fantastic one. So just to find out the answers. Okay. That's it. Okay. We'll stop here. Okay. We'll come and continue the Svedana. Then you know this introduction. Just next slide. Then classification, next slide. Okay, then next slide. Next slide. Uh, see, this is I wrote uh, the, about this simple clinical aspects of this Svetam. Svetam, I will give this, you can read about it also. So, where this uh, different Svetas in different diseases, where it is mentioned, I just compiled it. Okay, so you just for Kai Chikitsar, it will be helpful, I thought. So, just I compiled from uh, various diseases where this uh, Svetas are, what are the ingredients they told us to use. That also I compiled. Okay, I'll give my PPT, you can read about it. Next slide. Okay, then you can see Patra Pinda Sveda, it is there in Rajakshma. Next slide. Then Pariseka, then Pradeha, Pralepa, where it is, Shlipada Kushta. Next slide. Okay, so we'll just 
see the pinda swetham okay so basically pinda means bolus right so it is lump or bundle okay it is also known as shankara swetha then nivitapa potali swetha and putta swetha these are the different names we give for this pinda swetham okay next slide okay so basically it's a it's a shankara swetha itself or form of shankara swetha so shank shankara means you see these are two words been used shankara means mixture then shankara means which produces comfort or pleasure so one sha changes the meaning shankara and shankara so these are the you can use both so shankara means which signifies combination of different materials whereas shankara means which produces comfort or pleasure okay so it is malayalam it is called as kiri and this vedu kollal in tamil it is called as ottadam i don't know in other languages sorry about it okay then you can see this shankara swetha why we use commonly most of time this pinda swetha or kiris this shankara swetha is the first one mentioned among all the 13 swethas so always first is the best okay that's what my understanding is so first among 13 types of swetha and among all since shankara swetha is best out of them that's why he mentioned first okay that's why you see vata pitta kapha vata is powerful no so vata pitta kapha okay rasa is first because ra- without rasa shukra is impossible so that's why shankara is the first because this is the best next slide okay so these are the you know drugs we use but we i will we'll skip okay it is there in the tra- text next slide okay uh once again you see this is very nice point okay the previous slide you go no whether it is a tapa swetha or ushma swetha okay you can see when you know either the drugs like tila should be boiled and made into bolus and used for swetha by dipping in liquid such as kanjika kshira it may or it may be made into semi solid like payasa or odana and can be directly applied as a practice as annalepana in the same method powdered dung of cow ass camel pig etc may be made into bolus and used for swetha in conditions of kapha so this is the difference between either it can be ushma or tapa shankara swetha or pinda swetha can be both okay it can be both this what next slide if you see the above description so that either it may be done as a tapa swetha as stated in the later method so when you used directly cow dung and everything because tapa is very mild so it is tapa swetha whereas ushma swetha where you boil and make everything and dip and apply where more heat is so this pinda swetha or shankara swetha can be both ushma as well as tapam okay next slide so in the previous slide ma there is a slight change okay from vagbata okay because vagbata mentions it as a variant of ushma swetha he don't write he don't talk about the tapa swetha method of this uh, uh, pinda swetha okay there he is asking us to use this mrit kapala pashana losta this is only available in vagbata this is a slight change but more or less uh, the principles are same only next slide okay so next slide ah the previous ma so if you see the classification okay so if you see these are the different classification so maybe we may be thinking where from this uh, elakili or this patra potli has come so if you see this shankara swetha it is patra also must be used okay so you see the seeds okay then kapala the, all those different things are used okay next then tusha you can see that's why the husky is used so especially when there is a asthmatic attack you can simply use the husk you know the baran or the rice husk heat it and apply immediately you see the person feels better okay next slide okay it can be preferred same material or equal materials okay so these are the different patra potli swedas you can see sashtika pinda swedam churna pinda swedam then lavana pinda swedam then bhusha pinda swedam then baspas pinda swedam and so on okay so how they made the classification depending on the ingredient of the bolus okay next slide okay so quality based this is pinda swedha can be ruksha pinda swedam then it can be ruksha snigdha pinda swedam and snigdha pinda swedam depends on the quality so it can be that is a multi dimensional 
this one particular svedam only can be as used as ruksham also ruksha snigdham also snigdham also this you don't get any other uh, svedam that's why it is the best that's why it is mentioned best first because it is multi dimensional okay next slide okay so you can see this is the classification so if you see the ruksha pindasveda and ruksha snigdha pindasveda and snigdha pindasveda everywhere the churna pindasveda comes why because it depends on the material you use you can use the oil then it is become snigdha you use kanji or anything snigdha ruksha or only heat and apply like husk it is ruksha so that's why the churna pindasveda comes in the, all the three okay then if you see this ruksha valuka then basha pindasvedam then cha, this this chaga kshira sveda is nothing but the pellet of the goat okay then if you see ruksha snigdham patra potla jambira comes in it then if it is snigdha if you see anda svedam shashti this is with the egg okay then shashtika sali then goduma pindasvedam then mamsa pindasvedam so all these things only uh, they are uh, snigdha pindasvedas okay next slide next slide okay so it can be this is that's what i said multi dimensional brahmana rukshana shulagna shopagna kandugna okay depends on which medium which medicines you are using in it which dravyas next slide okay so among this churna pindasveda okay it is very commonly okay used method because for all the rukshana kriyas we start with churna pindasveda next slide okay so same this churna pindasveda i explained it becomes ruksha pindasveda when done done after applying oil on the body or some oil containing seeds are used in the materials when it is boiled in suitable liquid like milk sour gruel water it becomes soft and snigdha pindasvedam okay so depends on the preparation also depends on the medium also it can be snigdham ruksham or snigdha ruksham next slide okay then basically this if you see the kola kolata di churna is commonly used but we can use different you know uh, methods so these are some of the examples in churna pindasvedam many people use you know in my practice also use you see like the formulation modification is kolata equal to the other drug so if you want to have pain relieving or more ruksha kolata you can use you know along with the equal quantity of you know kottam chukadi churnam or it depends on what disease okay then you can see in the pakshagada case especially then along with grated coconut this is one small modification these are the things i want to say okay you can with your own ideas you can modify anything okay then similar similarly medicines of kottam chukadi which explained in taila so kottam chukadi tailam same uh, churnam you can use it for pindasveda in painful conditions if there is swelling and pain in the extremities you can use this combination okay next slide so this is if you see uh, this is you know i made like if for the simplification and understanding purpose so it is type is ruksha pindasvedam so churnas are used so usually it is kapavada okay like ama where swelling is there usually it is mostly if if it is only dry it is used ka you know this is pure kapha but most of the time in all these vyadis where we give swedana vata is always underlying uh, factor it is there okay so it is kapha vata ama then acute soft tissue inflammation stiffness and pain example fibrosis okay then medium if you see dhanyamlam panchamlam gomutram etc okay so optional additives if you see dry coconut scrapings salt turmeric powder then this methika okay so indications if you see kapha vata sub acute soft tissue inflammation stiffness and pain okay so these are like you know other seeds also against so thailam nimba thailam samskardi thailam okay so logic it seems to be relieve pain and inflammation okay next slide so once again for relieving the pain and swelling these ingredients can be used like tusha yava masha and kolata paste of tila vacha and sata pushpa and laja churnam also if nothing is available simple laja churna you can use next slide okay and if you see this is very nice one uh, i think it is in uh, 
சக்கரபாணி தத்தா மிக்சர் ஆஃப் சால்ட் அண்ட் ஆஷ் ஹீட்டட் இன் பிரான் ஸ்பேன் பிரான் ஸ்பேன் இஸ் அட்வைஸ்ட் இன் பெயின்ஃபுல் த்ரோட் ஸோ மேக் இட் லைக் ஸ்மால் பொட்டலி ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் லைக் வேர் தான் டான்சிலேட்டிஸ் ஐ ஃபர்காட் வேர் இட் இஸ் ஐ திங்க் இட் இஸ் இன் சக்கரதத்தம் ஓகே ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் வெரி நைஸ் ஒன் மேக் அ ஸ்மால் பொட்டலி இன் பெயின்ஃபுல் த்ரோட் இஸ் தேர் தேர் யூ கேன் யூஸ் salt and the ash is is a gomaya ash you know ash prepared for, out of that gobarka oh that na that i i forgot the english name of it okay cowden cake. cake yeah yes so in that okay then it is in kerala it is very very famous this in chikitsa manjari this this is available this punnagadi churnam okay especially in pakshagatham okay neuro degenerative conditions this punnagadi churnam heated with oil is used this uh, this is from chikitsa manjari okay it's a kerala i think hopefully somebody translate this but it is available in malayalam okay when there is a churning pain in apabahaka pindasveda with kangu you know kangu uh, it's a kind of millet you know small millet in uh, the tribes used to eat in olden days and all in tamil it is called tinai in in Malayalam also, I don't know in other regional languages, okay? In, yeah, yeah, something like that, yes, yes. So, in Apabahuka, this you can use, okay? And medium is Kanjika or Kshira, okay? This is very good, you know, this I use my practice, especially in simple, I don't use it anywhere, Apabahukam. This Punnagadi Churnam, I use it in Pakshagatam, rather than going with simple Churna Swetha or Padu Elakiri. You know, these are small, small things, you make variation, no? Like, people also will find it's different, and you know, these are the fine tunings, where it will be helpful to different conditions, nothing else. Next slide. Okay? Then if you see in Ardita, Pindasveda of Jeeraka, Methika, Lashuna, Kulata and Saindava in Karpasa Asthyadi Thaila is advised. Okay? So this and all where I put, where I practice, what I am practice, I am putting, as I said, it is your choice. Okay? So in uh, Ardita, or this uh, facial palsy, along with, uh, you know, after this Kshira Dhuma, I use this. Okay? Then in Kampavada, because lashuna is avarna uh, haram right in kampavada and all it comes under avarna so lashuna methika and kangu cures kampavada then danya pindasveda in this method bolus of grains so this is danya pindasveda in this method grains are used okay for fermentation okay next slide so in another method boiled in coconut milk you can this is very nourishing it is so all these things are boiled in coconut milk okay all these ingredients and made as a paste okay kashayam or thailam is used and it is applied okay then if you see the one particular method is there you know this navadanya pindasveda you know this nine danyas is there no see this and all modification nothing else so new modification navadanya you use like you know for uh, uh, auspicious purposes and all right in the marriage general in south india we use so this navadanya pindasveda it also can be used okay so you can uh, like you know uh, ma- masha kulata all those things either you can make a paste or you can steam it okay and make it a paste and bolus and once again the medium can be either milk or you know thailam also depends on the condition you can use okay next slide <coughs> okay next slide once again you know about the uh, valuka svetam okay everybody knows about it next slide next slide then this bhusha pinda svetam okay so bhusha is a material of sveda you know that husk right you can use different husks okay so this is nothing but you know this uh, husk we use either goduma or even rice you know these both husks can be used okay next slide you see these are the some formulation and indications okay practically you know uh, they use it in kerala i i got it from different persons uh, you know usually uh, to be frank i never used all this you know i just i wanted to share with you maybe in my future practice i will use it okay so these are the formulations okay in swasham pakshagatham so if nothing is available simply you can use these materials it can be cost effective also if you see kola kola tadi and other thing very much it is very costly so these things can be very cost effective you can use it in different people in different conditions okay next slide okay then this 
chaga kshisha pinda swedam dried and powder goat's pellet in tied in cloth okay it is vada kapha condition okay then haridra pinda swedam here also if you see haridra sarjarasa satapushpa laja along with the egg white are used to prepare the bolus and utilized in the case of okay kshatakshina and lumbar canal stenosis okay this is very modification it's brahmana okay then this uh, you know rice flakes this laja no or the rice flakes puri you know this uh, uh, churmure you know with that also okay pratuka pindasvedam okay so these are all the different modifications next slide next slide okay then once again basma pindasvedam so bolus with ash of cow dung is very good in relieving pain especially the fibro myalgia okay next next slide uh in the previous slide ma so this basa pindasveda is method where the dugs are powdered and sprinkled with sour gruel a pot containing kanjika is covered with a lid containing so it is just cooked in the kanjikam right sour gruel okay and boluses are kept above and the steam is you know taken into that bolus so next slide so basically where it is so this method is explained in the context of karpas astyadi churna a well known formulation indicated in pain occurring due to sama dosha over uh, snik janu pada anguli gulfa skanda kati parsha prishta you know antrika so when you get you know these kind of cases you can uh, use this okay so the same formulation is also mentioned for the treatment of amavatam okay next slide then you know this patra pindam okay the leaves okay patra patli swedam next so you know the ingredients also next then if you see this type it is ruksha and snigdha okay pinda swedam and uh, chopped medicated leaves are fried in oil okay and uh, these are the additives like you know this uh, you know dry coconut or this tilapalam okay this are the sesame seed satapushpa methika or jambiram lavanam lashunam these things you can add always then indications it is kapha vata subacute to chronic spasmodic pain so medium is this niranda thailam nimba thailam or sashapa thailam or any other thailams whichever is you know pain relieving quality you can use okay so basically patra pitla swedam is ruksha snigdha variety of sweda indicated for kapha vata okay disorders with vata hara patras okay next slide next slide this is about jambira pinda swedam okay so where this lemon okay this jambira pinda swedam or this uh, you know naranga kili we call or you know Uh, this jambira this uh, you know citrus fruit is used lemon curry it is so in some places if it is too costly you can use this madhi phalam also that big one you know that is also basically there are citrus fruits so that you can use okay next slide so basically when you see the curry it should be the heat you know in previous slide ma so this is the ideal heat but it varies from that's why i put 40 to 45 uh, degrees it you know this tolerance heat tolerance varies from person to person so it is once again you cannot basically say this uh, you know th- you have to ask the patient literally how is the comfortness so start with the mild heat then go with a little bit more heat okay next slide li- next slide so this and all you know next slide next slide ah next is this dhanya pinda swedam so it is snigdha variety okay so churnam like kola kulatadi satapushpa methika and kulata is used so it is vata kapha in nature especially used in degenerative diseases in obese patient disease associated with kapha conditions also okay and spasmodic neurological pain once again the medium is thailam you can use in you know, a whatever you prefer okay next slide okay then ulkarika pinda swedam okay it is once again it's a form of snigdha pinda swedam where this cooked kulatta 
தில மாஷ முத்க சஷ்டிக கோலகுளத்தாதி யோகா அண்ட் குக்குடாண்டம் ஹியர் ஆல்சோ த எக் கம்ஸ் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் கால்ட் இஸ் உத்காரிக யோகா ஓகே ஸோ வாதா அண்ட் எஸ்பெஷலி த டிஜெனரேட்டிவ் டிசீசஸ் டிஜெனரேட்டிவ் டிசீசஸ் ஆஃப் வாதா ஓகே ஸோ மீடியம் இஸ் ஏரண்டம் நிம்பம் ஸோ தட் ஒன்ஸ் அகெயின் யூ கேன் யூஸ் வாட் எவர் மீடியம்ஸ் யூ வாண்ட் ஓகே ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் the logic okay behind this because it is brahmana okay it is uh, you know it reduces the pain and especially it works on the nerves next slide then shastika pindasvedam it's very mrudu snigdha pindasvedam and you know about this it can be used in skin diseases also okay especially avarna vada conditions in neurological conditions we use but if the person is having intolerance to cold like you know immediately they will heat must be in this கண்டி இன் திஸ் ஸ்வேதம் ப்ராப்பர் மெயின்டெனிங்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஹீட் இஸ் வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன் அதர்வைஸ் த பர்சன் வில் லிட்ரலி ஷிவர் நவ் இட் இஸ் டூ பீப்புள் அண்ட் ஆல் வில் டூ டெஃபினெட்லி தட் ஓன்ட் ஈல்டு த எஃபெக்ட் யூ நீட் அட்லீஸ்ட் ஃபோர் பர்சன் டு டூ திஸ் அதர்வைஸ் த நெக்ஸ்ட் டே பேஷண்ட் வில் சே சார் ஐ டோன்ட் வாண்ட் த ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் பிகாஸ் தட் மச் கோல்ட் இட் இஸ் ஓகே நெக்ஸ்ட் ஸ்லைட் okay so this is the logic you know i wrote for everything you know just i wrote some logic what is the idea behind doing this next slide okay then kshira dhumam okay this is a mrudu snigdha nadi swedam especially we use it for arditam this everybody knows next slide okay then this is simple you know uh, sweta adiyoga chikitsa okay what we should do because sometimes when you do baspa swedam rarely it does occurs you know uh, so what we can do simply you know dehydration maximum occurs nothing else or giddiness occurs not more than that so that can be easily managed with you know cold water or you know coconut water you know and then some fruit juices or even sometimes uh, you know if, if it is too much dehydration no go with ors liquid simply give the person nowadays you get it in a nice flavors you don't need to break your heads go and purchase ask the person to drink he will be fine within 5 minutes okay next slide okay then this is about our conventional method but above that simple ors will take care of most of the things and rest okay next slide okay so this and all we don't usually you know get these kind of complications of course if you know the young person if the doctor is not good then these complications can come otherwise most of the time we are careful about you know so these things can happen in children or very old people when you give the or in the summer season when you give so much of heat or the therapist has done something wrong then only you get but most of them in clinical practice we don't because we are cautious about it next slide okay so of course if you get this vrna and other thing i uh, you know sometimes it happens in recent recently also my therapist he you know he was doing pichu he burnt the p- patient's back he is having 15 years of experience so uh, you know he, i don't know like he he as he said the sometimes in the pakshagada people they may not talk so that person was not communicating he just put that so he was fragile it happened so we must be very careful when we uh, do this heat application so with this i will conclude my uh, talk and once again thank you for patience hearing show all the best thank you